There I am. Me. E-baby. You guessed it. Story time, baby. Oh my goodness. Grab your popcorn, your tea, your snacks, whatever you like. Whatever you need. Whatever you like. Grab it. So this is actually a sensitive topic, so let me make that clear. So it's a serious topic and I figure if my first video is going to be a story time video and a good one, you might as well talk about something that's actually real, something that could bring awareness, something that really is real. Here it goes. It was my 10th grade year of high school and I live out in like a town that's very small. I'm from out, actually I don't live there, I live in California now, but um, it's a really small town. So kind of everybody knows everybody, you know? You don't have to really worry about where you're going or your parents didn't have to worry about who you're hanging out with because most of the time everybody knows everybody. And if I keep looking up at the screen, the viewfinder, that's, that's just because it's on. So I'm sorry about that, but I can't help it. There's no worries, everyone knows everybody and you know, that's just the type of town it is. It's my 10th grade year and it was a typical day. It started out like any. I was actually, the squeakiness in my chair though, and my posture, ew, somebody help me. Anyway, this is what this is for. We're learning, learning lessons, people. So, started out like any old day. I uh, actually was attending my cousin's wedding. So I knew I was gonna be with my family that day. And this plan that happened later on at night really wasn't even in motion until later on that day. So this definitely was one of those like, expect the unexpected and you just really never know what could happen. With my family, we were at the wedding and we, we sat through church, we took pictures in church, everybody was happy, it was a, it was a great day. And after that, we went to the reception that everybody goes to, it's like the party and stuff. So. We're at the party and everything's cool and I was at the reception, I'm dancing, stomach growling? Oh my god, every disruption ever. Maybe I should eat. I should probably eat at the same time. Right now I just have a banana, so I'm gonna grab it. I'm back with my banana and my crackers. So my stomach won't growl throughout my video, you know? I'm at the reception, dancing, having a good time. Dance with my family and I get a text on my phone. And it's from a friend. And she's like a friend who I, you know, frequently hung out with. Somebody I was always around. No worries in the world for me or my family to think like, man, I should say no. <laughs> but, so she hits me up. She's all, what are you doing? You wanna come to this party? And, you know, at the time, you're young and you're in 10th grade, so you like you don't really want to like chill with your family all night, you know? And at the time, I was probably like that. So I was like, yeah, I want to come to the party. Like, why wouldn't I? So I tell my mom, I tell my dad, like, hey, listen, I'm going to go to this party with my friend. And they're like, okay, go. Like, they don't care. They're at the wedding having fun, you know? And go have fun. They let me go to the party. I remember this so vividly because I was wearing a black dress. It was really cute too. And I went home and I changed into this sweater. Cause you know, when some things happen to you in life, like traumatic experiences, you either remember a lot of it or you don't remember any of it. Body vivid moments and then ones that I don't even know what happened. So I go home. I change into this blue sweater. It's like a high turtleneck. It's a high turtleneck, thick, cause it was cold. It was like either January or February, I can't remember. It was a big, thick turtleneck, blue, navy blue. And through the stripes of it had other colors, almost like a rainbow effect. So it was like kind of scrunchy. And if you would pull it apart, it would have other colors. But if it closed all up, it would just be like a navy blue, thick turtleneck. Remember I had that on. I put on the shirt, put on the pants, and I get picked up. I'm not gonna use names in this video because there's no need for that. Plus this is the whole world I'm talking to. It's not like I'm just talking to people from my hometown. Like I'm talking to a lot of y'all. So half y'all don't even know where I'm even from. 
And the ones that do, I'm not gonna put your business out. Well, your name. Definitely your actions, but not your name. So that's what story time's about, baby. It's YouTube. I'm finished. So I get picked up by two of my friends at the time. We drive to this, this party. Now, my town is spread out and it's very like uh, farmlandish in certain parts. And so there's a lot of space. So from one town to the other town might take 40 minutes. So from where I was at, at my house and in the wedding was in the same town as me. So driving to where we were at was probably about 35 minutes to maybe 40. That's, that might be pushing it, but again, like I can't really remember the exact location, but I know it was kind of deep out. Not really, let's like, let's make this really clear. For those that know me really can vouch for me. And for those that don't really know me and just like to judge a book by its cover, they might think whatever they want. I'm more of like, not a drinker, more of a like poker. You feel me? So that's not really my thing to go to a party and get drunk. So when I say I'm about to have fun tonight, I'm not meaning like I'm about to go take shot after shot after shot because that's really not how I am. This is really what's the whole set off of the whole story. I get there and I walk into this house. It's like a freaking mansion. It's a big house. And I'm not familiar with anybody that's there except for maybe like one other person. But there's only about six people there. We walk into the house, I remember this too, this was very strange to me. There was like a, one of those couches that's like, one part of the, is a back and then it's just straight. You know what I'm saying? So it's like one part and then straight. But there was a kid laying on it. And we can, like, and we're in a, a, a rich person's house right now. Like we're not in the ghetto, we're not in the hood, we're not in none of those circumstances because I got stories about those. But we're in a place where you just typically would not think that anything will go wrong. But I know I remember seeing that. But nobody was making a big deal about it. Like I was kind of looking like, is he all right? But nobody was kind of looking. So I was just like, maybe he always does that. It was that type of vibe. I remember walking downstairs into this game room type of setting. And it was the most tricked out basement I've ever seen before. I was just like, whoa. There were people behind this like little bar okay there was two people a girl and a guy again i won't mention their names oh no i'm falling stars <laughs> look at that i fell that's pretty cool there was two people behind the bar i'm not going to say who they were they know who they are i'm not going to tell their names it was their residence somebody's relative of their residence and the reason the party was going on let me skip to that real quick was because whoever's parents it was were away on some winter trip it was like france they were i remember somebody saying yeah the parents are away for a few weeks that's why we're having the party i remember that too so, hmm, okay pretty cool because this is like a big crib like i wouldn't really just want mad people in my crib i just wouldn't especially my parents they would not want that we go downstairs where right as soon as we get there they offer us drinks right away like not even within five seconds of walking down the stairs they're like what do you want to drink it was a girl and it was a guy so like you don't think anything of it and i forget what i said probably like vodka and coke or stupid stuff i don't know some cheap stuff i was just like whatever whatever you have this is i think when my intuitiveness set in it was early i said i looked over at my friend man i didn't watch them make my drink i hope they didn't put anything in it and weird that I said that because I almost said it in like a joking way and she just was kind of like oh my god yeah right like they would ever do that like I remember then after that mind you I'm here with three people my, to my two friends one guy one girl I take a sip of the drink and my mom and dad are the type of people that my whole life they really kind of let me live like they knew I was good they knew I was in good hands they knew I wasn't out lying and stealing and doing bad things. Let me experience exploring being a teenager. There we go. So I knew what vodka tasted like, what Captain Morgan tasted like, what tequila tasted like. I knew what they tasted like. And I also knew the effects from having too much of that, AKA being drunk. Yeah. 
you know what it, the, it feels like when you're getting a little woozy. You know what it feels like when you're tipsy. You know what it feels like when you're freaking plastered. You know what it feels like to be hungover. You know all those feelings. So you should know this is a, a tip for everybody out there and for parents. I'm not saying let your kid get wasted. Let them know what shouldn't taste right versus what should. Even though they both taste like shit. Let them know at least that Okay, you can tell if something's a little off because had I not had these type of experiences with other types of alcohol, then I wouldn't have known. Let's be just straight real and I definitely wouldn't be here to tell this story. So, I'm gonna say I knew immediately after taking about three sips of the drink that something was immediately wrong. Like, bad wrong. And this is where the story gets freaking crazy. So. I remember going into, like I said, their basement was huge, mad big. So they had mad rooms, like other doors with other rooms. Mine is the big whole room we was in. We was already in a big ass room with like mad stuff in it. And there was a big back porch, but there was other rooms, like other doors for other rooms. So I remember walking into one of these rooms and there was like, plastic all over everything like they were remodeling it and it was all white the walls were painted white and then there was just plastic everywhere so i remember calling at my time i had a boyfriend i called him up and i'm like hey i'm at this party and you know i'm feeling real sick i just feel like something's really wrong with me i'm really scared so he's like you gotta go get out of there we just got here like how am i gonna say like hey listen guys i feel like i'm gonna die let's go I mean, angels are always around, and if you believe in that kind of stuff, I mean, maybe you don't, and that's fine too, but, you know, something told me I have to say I have to go. Whether they want to leave or not, I have to go. So, somebody got to get me out of this house right now. So, I remember walking into the back into the room and telling the, my friend at the time, hey, listen, I got to go right now. Something don't feel right. I feel really sick. Not like throw up sick, like, um... I can't explain the sickness. The sickness was just an overwhelming feeling in my body that it wasn't normal. Like as if I was poisoned. My insides were burning. Everything was freaking turning into cut. Like it was bad. So I was like, we got to get out of here right, right now. She's like, girl, nothing's wrong with your drink. Like I'm drinking the same drink. Well, people were freaking evil. And sometimes they're not gonna target you or you, but they might target me and I was the target that night and probably the guy upstairs because he didn't look too good. But, so anyways, I'm like, we gotta leave. They're like, all right, we'll take you home. We'll take you back to the wedding or whatever. I was like, okay, cool. Just take me somewhere where, like, where I'm by my family, like right, right now. Mind you, we're about 40 minutes out from where I'm at. They put me in the back of the car, the back seat of the car. And, and from what I was told, and what I kind of can go in and out of consciousness and remember is convulsing, seizuring, and never in my life have I ever done that. So like, you know when that's happening because you've never done that, so you know like that's happening. And so I remember them telling me they looked in the back seat and seen something was wrong with my body. Like I was spazzing, having convulsions. So, or it gets kind of hard to even tell to be quite honest because it's hard to absorb the things that like people would do to other people when you're just so not like that like would give my whole heart to somebody but instead of them driving me to the hospital they pulled over to the side of the road into a parking lot and pulled my body out the car and left me on the concrete yeah <laughs> so um the kid left me on the concrete because he said it was, we're young, we're underage. So we only had like a driver's permit that, that um, made sure we were home by 11. That was the rule or something like that. If you were up, out past 11 and you got pulled over, you got a ticket. And then it was, it worked towards like you getting your license. I don't know. I never got pulled over. So the kid, instead of um, taking me to the hospital, he left me on the parking lot and proceeded to drive home to his house, go into his house, tell his mother and father he had a great night at the party, climbed into bed and just went to sleep. <laughs> he just went to sleep. 
And my friend at the time stood with me. It happened to be angels that I, I call him my angel. He knows who he is. <laughs> my family calls him my angel. Everybody calls him my angel. The parking lot that they left me in was a restaurant. So everybody kind of just hung out there sometimes. And that night, a good friend of mine happened to be in the, the restaurant. Well, he came running out and he swooped me up in his arms and he put me in his car. And at this time, I'm completely, they said my eyes were all the way rolled back in my head and I was seizuring. So I was just shaking and like I wasn't making much noise and my body, like it didn't sound like I was able to breathe. I don't remember none of this. This is straight blackout mode because this is the poison had already been kind of setting in my system. So he pull, puts me in his car and he drives me to the hospital where my mother worked. And my mother wasn't working because my mother's at the wedding. So they all know my mother and they have to call her because he, he rushed me in in the ER. There was no like register her sit down. He carried me in my lifeless body. And... They called my mother and they were just like, you gotta come up here. Your daughter's up here. They just carried her in. Now my mother, just an hour and a half prior, is dancing and laughing. We're having a good time. And now she's rushing to the hospital to see what the hell even happened. They didn't even want to tell her over the phone. Nobody really knew at this point. They lay me down and at the point they, they started to do a lot of chest compressions on me and um because them that pressure like the chest compressions i don't know if people really understand the intensity of that but when you're pumping somebody's heart to save their life you're pushing with all your might look at me i'm little so they put me through all these ivs and these drug reversal like blood things like in my body or reverse it and so i'm in this like state of coma like quite some time and then when i wake up i don't remember nothing nothing at all it's all just what people told me and my mom and dad and sister and boyfriend at the time came up and was staring at me in the hospital saying that i look dead and like that's really hard to hear because like i'm such a up person <laughs> like come on like that's fucking hard and the girl that I was friends with was outside of the hospital. She didn't come in. She almost was like, I don't care what happens because she probably didn't. She probably would have went home. I don't know. She was like, oh my God, I really just don't want to get in trouble. And my mom was just like, get in trouble. Your best friend's in there dying. Go in there and see her. She was literally sitting outside the hospital, sitting on the curb. Some shady shit. So I'm in there and I wake up after a lot of time and i don't remember nothing and i'm just like what happened to me and why am i in the hospital what the and my dad wanted to go do all kinds of cra it was just like a it was so crazy that i was like how did this happen just because i like left the wedding i went to the party like i'm just trying to have fun it all boiled down to my blood having to be sent away to the crime lab for them to then find out what was in it the doctors are like, we got your crime lab results back. It came back after some time. I'll never forget this because I was sitting there and my mom pulled like the thing out the sheet and she was just so upset. And like my dad was so upset. And like, you're just like, what the? I was just really upset. So and mind you, I still had to go to school with these people. It all comes down to this. My results came back from the crime lab. Main substance drug that was put in there now the substance I'm going to say first is commonly used for date rape. It's called GHB. Luckily, thank you God, I knew immediately something was wrong with me to tell them to get me out of there. I knew that because that is a drug where it doesn't take more than five minutes to hit you. So it's not like, you know what I mean? Like, and now here's where it gets sick. Whoever made my drink that night made my vodka with Coke, with GHB, with Drano, with Clorox. Just mixed it all up and said, here you go, have a wonderful night. <laughs> and the devil is real, people. Don't ever forget that. God is too, but the devil is. My story time is now 
over. I'm all done sharing my story with you guys. I want to let you know that don't trust nobody. Don't leave your drink. If you do leave your drink, put a napkin over your drink. In my case, I didn't, I got served my drink. I took about two sips of my drink and immediately felt like my whole inside of my body was burning and in flames, like I was being eaten alive, like flesh eating from the inside out. That I was dying, I was feeling like I couldn't breathe. It was, it was just horrible. There was no tipsy, oh, maybe she was tipsy or maybe you had too much to drink. If you have a red plastic cup, because this is exactly what it was, the same cup, and I drank about that much of it, if you can see. So the doctor said, had I drank even that much, I wouldn't have survived. Had I said, oh, there's nothing wrong with me, maybe this is just the way I'm supposed to feel, and drank all of it, I wouldn't be here to tell the story. Again, I say, well, great sharing my story with you, and I hope that everybody out there, that I could help somebody or make somebody aware, or I'm sure people have similar stories about how people have put things in their drink and tried to, you know, slip things in their drink, and I'm sure people have horrible experiences, and some people have gotten to, you know, slip, slip out really e easily, and um, I was kind of the person that has been always so aware and follows my gut and intuition that, like, if I know something's wrong, nobody's getting me to say anywhere. That's just not, that's just how I am. So, I'm the most aware person, and it happened to me. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, it's very common, and it's very real, and it's very right now as much as it was then, if not even more now. So, if you have children, talk to them about it. If you have kids, if you have friends, if you have sisters, little brothers, anybody, talk to them about it. It is very real. It's very easy to get your hands on these kind of drugs. It takes just a little bit, a little sprinkle, and it is lights out. If they mix it with other substances, it is lights out, out. So you don't want that. Be aware, be safe, subscribe to my channel, and I love you so much. Follow me. Come back for more. I'll be doing story times. I got a whole list of story times lined up for y'all. A whole bunch of topics. It's going to be so much fun to tell you all the crazy stories. All right, guys. See you later.